All right, so uh, chapter 19 deals with population ecology. And populations are one of the most important units in, uh, in biology because populations have characteristics individuals don't have. And over time, we're really worried about the survival and change in populations. So let's start with a definition. A population is just a group of individuals living in a particular area at a particular time. They, the individuals uh, form a, uh, a group in that they can potentially interbreed. They share characteristics, they share genes, and uh, those things can change over time. Populations have a characteristic density. They have a pattern of spacing, clumped or random, or uh, uniform. They have an age structure, which I'll get to in a minute, and populations can change in size over time. And these are all important characteristics, and, and we're going to focus on the last two of them. Uh, so first, age structures are important, um, and these are just the proportion of individuals of specific ages. And so in some populations, there'll be very few old individuals and lots and lots of young individuals. And so that's like the expanding rapidly populations here shown on the one side. And these are human populations. And so when you have lots of young individuals, you know that there's going to be future population growth. Okay. Uh, expanding slowly there, that's the United States. There's still more young individuals than there are older individuals. But then you get to population structures that are stable, mostly uniform same number of individuals in each age class. And you can actually have population structures that are kind of inverted and are likely to decline because there are fewer young individuals than there are old individuals. And so these are characteristic age structures of different populations. They can happen at different times and uh, they can lead to different fates in the, in the population and, and or can be seen at different times. There are two basic models of population growth. One is a, a model of growth at a steady rate, and this causes populations to increase rapidly. This is called exponential growth, and this happens when populations are not limited by resources. So often new populations will grow rapidly like that. And then there are populations that grow rapidly for a while, but then their growth slows as they reach a certain limit. And there's some sort of limiting factor like food or disease or space or uh, competition that limits them. And so this limiting factor determines the capacity that the population has or the carrying capacity. And so these are two basic models of population growth that, that we deal with. The um, uh, exponential or logistic population models and these populations, some look like, you know, look like they're in exponential growth most of the time. And what it turns out is that they're controlled by density independent factors. And so they rapidly increase in density until some kind of strange factor causes them to go back down again. Usually it's like a weather event, like a winter or, um, you, you know, like a flood or something like that. And so, so they'll grow exponentially and then they'll crash and then they'll grow exponentially again. In logistic population growth, where you reach that carrying capacity, there's some sort of environmental resistance that's dependent on density. So there's density-dependent factors that limit them. This could be something like predators at high densities. The predators focus on them and eat them. It could be competition, that they, they just start competing for limiting resources, and that slows them down. It could be the resources themselves or the spread of a disease in the population. But these things are all likely to happen at high density. Okay, And this kind of brings us to uh, different traits that organisms have uh, and uh, survivorship. In different types of organisms, there are, are different populations, there are, are different likelihoods that organisms will survive at any particular age. In some organisms, individuals have a very good chance of surviving until old age, and then they're likely to die. This would be like a type one population curve like elephants or people. And so 
Um, if you survive an early, you know, early period, it's likely that you're going to have good survival, steady survival until old age, and then you'll probably die. In some organisms, it's more random. You have an equal chance of dying at any period, and so the death rate is kind of steady, and you have this type 2 curve that's shown there. Uh, in other organisms, it's, there's an early period, like a larval period, that's very risky, but if you make it through there, then you have a steady chance. But most individuals die in this early period. That's the type 3 population curve. And so these, these types of survivorship curves often are uh, organisms respond by having a certain type of life history tr set of traits. Um, and organisms that are type 1 have this type 1 survivorship curve. Generally, because they have a long life, they may mature slowly. Um, they may have multiple breeding periods and then produce one or two offspring each time. Uh, and, and those offspring take a long time to grow. And so they have what's called an equilibrium life history. That's the type 1 life history, elephants or us. In organisms that have uh, the type 3 life history, they're opportunistic. And so because it's a very risky early period, you want to mature as quickly as possible. And, and then you want to be able to breed as with a lot, produce a lot of offspring quickly and maybe not give them much parental care because they're, you know, the chance of them surviving is not all that great. And so, so you, you, you mature quickly, you have fewer numbers of fertile periods, but you have a lot of offspring and you just kind of let them go. And that's opportunistic organisms. Okay. And so, so survivorship, uh, life history traits, these kind of go along with uh, these two growth models, they kind of show the same way. So and in natural populations, we, we see populations that are somewhat stable. And usually those are the type 1 survivorship, logistic population growth type organisms. But we also see organisms that cycle or are what are called eruptive, which means they, they have high, high uh, potential to, to go through this um, exponential growth and suddenly there's lots and lots of them. I have a, a graph here with the snowshoe hare population and the lynx population and these are cyclical or almost eruptive populations where their abundance some years is more than tenfold greater than their abundance other years uh, and so they go through these periods of rapid population growth, exponential growth. Um, and the snowshoe hare since they are the primary fruit of the lynx. The lynx kind of tracks the snowshoe hare population. Our book also talks about other organisms that are opportunistic and invade new habitats. And when they invade these new habitats, they kind of escape any limits on their population growth. And so their populations become very, very high and they can become a real problem. And so our book talked about a vine called kudzu that is spreading in southern United States that's been spreading for a hundred years and can just take over regions, but also animals like the Burmese python. Uh, in our lakes in the, our area, we have problems with fish um, and, and mussels that spread. One is the zebra mussel. Um, and another thing in our area is a, a bush honeysuckle, a, a, a woody bush that spreads. But these are our potential problems all the time. And they're usually these uh, opportunistic species that have the potential to go undergo exponential growth. Okay, all right. There's also natural populations that have kind of the opposite problem, that they are kind of equilibrium species and more likely adapted to survive at high population densities. And they'll, they'll have relatively slow growth, late maturation, produce fewer offspring, uh, or produce them later. And uh, populations are renewable resources. They can, uh, because animals and plants reproduce, some of them can be used by people each year. But one of the hardest things is to, to develop sustainable use of populations. And that means understanding the logistic population growth model. That means understanding uh, how fast species reproduce and then finding out what's a level that you can uh, harvest them, a sustainable harvest level or sustainable research management. 
And so if we, if we know a lot about the organism, we can kind of plot a logistic population model. And then the maximum harvest in any one year is about half of the carrying capacity. Uh, but it, we have to be careful because in some species, they're slow to reproduce. Um, and so that, that means it'll take them longer to, to regenerate that. Um, we often get into problems when we take uh, equilibrium species and we harvest them like they're opportunistic species. And that's when we, we greatly decrease populations or cause them to crash or collapse. And so this here is a picture of uh, a cod, a ling cod, uh, one of the most harvested fish in the history of human beings. But it turns out it's also kind of an equilibrium species. It's slow to mature. Um, it it takes a long time before it gets fertile, and uh, and so if we harvest them too fast, their populations have crashed, and that's what's happened with with lingcod, one of the most important fisheries around. All right. So in summary, we can predict the growth of plant, animal, and human populations by observation and in the use of two basic models: exponential and logistic population growth. Known factors affect population size. Density-dependent factors are important in limiting populations as their size increase, increases. Organisms that have opportunistic life history traits may rapidly increase in new habitats and are have a great potential to become invasive. And organisms um, that have equilibrium life history traits may decrease if too many are harvested or habitat is reduced and there's the potential for them to become threatened or endangered species where the whole population might crash. Okay, we'll talk about human populations on the next time.